Part two of this discussion is going to talk about the common fork join pool and uh, just give you a quick overview of this. You've seen this before, but we're just going to recap it in the context of the fork join framework. So there's a common pool that's available and appropriate for many applications, not all, but many applications. So all the threads, all the various applications or, or parts of a program that want to use something in a process will share this common fork join pool. And if you don't create a separate pool or you don't specify which pool to use, it's going to use the common pool. The reason for doing this is that that allows the common pool to optimize everything. And as you've seen, the fork join pool implementation works best when there's lots of things to do, because then it can go ahead and partition them and, and uh, send them out to various threads in the pool, and it can be very, very optimized. This global versus local type of resource management approach is common in other domains. So garbage collection and memory management is one example. There's all kinds of other examples in everyday life. You can read here if you want to look about <laughs> how people organize resources in companies. It talks about this as well. So garbage collection is another thing that, that tries to go with a, a global solution in a, in a process. By default, the common fork join pool has one less thread than the number of cores. So I think I've mentioned this before. You can find out how many cores you have or how many threads will be in your pool, and it relates to the number of cores that the Java virtual machine thinks you have at your disposal. So we have seven on my quad core hyper-threaded processor. And when you invoke something, if you invoke the fork join pool, then the, the thread that invokes is also borrowed and that's used to do computations as well. So like it might be the main thread or the user interface thread or some other thread, whatever the invoking thread is, that thread will also be used as part of the pool. So you'll end up with additional threads to, to carry out your processing, one additional thread. So the idea here is to take advantage of all the threads on the processor. As we've mentioned before, the default number of threads may be inadequate. So you might end up with more work to do than you have threads in your pool. Um, and this is particularly true if you have sort of blocking operations. In general, the fork join pool is really designed primarily for things that run to completion, but you can use it for blocking operations. But if you do that, you have to be aware that uh, the default pool without extra work will end up with underutilization or maybe even deadlock. So for that reason, you can expand and contract the size of the pool. And you can do it either by modifying a property to give the number of threads, but that's rather hard to estimate because you don't always know in advance what the right number is unless you have a very static program. And moreover, if you make this change, that'll affect all the other parts of your program in a process that are trying to use the common fork join pool. So you may need to be able to automatically increase or decrease the fork join pool size. The way to do that is by using a managed blocker. And that allows you to temporarily add these worker threads to the common fork join pool. And this is useful for any kind of program that needs to block on I.O. or other synchronizers. So if you're going to be blocking, not being able to make progress till something finishes, right, like reading a big file or writing a big file or waiting for a lock or passing messages via a blocking queue, all those good things, in that case, you probably need to use a managed blocker. And that's used to basically temporarily increase the number of threads in your pool. And then we'll go ahead and either shut them down or make them available for reinstatement at some later point if they're not being used or need to be reused. All right, so that's just a quick overview of the common fork join pool just for completeness. Um, we'll actually use that in your program, but you wouldn't have to. You could, you could the assignment number four, A, you could make your own fork join pool, but it's easiest just to use the common one. 